Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Black History Month. I thought this was an important podcast to do. This will be generally just like my science ones or my social media. I will read article from a site. I might do more than one, like hit one and a half because it's such a broad reaching topic. In this day and age, it seems like things have gotten better, but there's still underlying things that I think need to be addressed. And I thought this would be a perfect time to do a little bit about the origins of the Black History Month and a little story here and there about me growing up. Uh, as usual, I'll put the link to the article in the description. Most of the time I'll read them word for word, mess up a lot of words because I'm just some schmo from Brooklyn. And I'll interject things here and there. Um, probably not a lot for this. I do it with the science ones because, you know, it just leads to another thing. But I want to start off, uh, first it was my birthday recently. And I want to thank everybody for being awesome. I had my first brush with this, um, I don't know, call it racism or whatever. I didn't know the concept. I was in first grade, and like I said, I was oblivious to color, what everything was. You just had friends in school, and I had a um, friend, an African-American friend, well, and I mean, it, looking back, I loved him as a person. Like I had no concept. But we went to get pizza. Is a pizzeria a block away from the school I went to growing up. And after the second or third time, you know, you get out of school, you know, little kids, you run down to the, it's only a block and a half. You only had to cross really one street. You can go to the pizzeria and everybody would eat. And I noticed after like the third time, it was uncomfortable. There were looks, there were things said, and I didn't understand it. And it was making me feel weird. And I remember going to my mother and saying, um, just describing to her the feeling. Remember, it's first grade. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, you know, you love the kid. You love the person. And the boys and girls you grew up with or when you went to school, it was rare. I mean, I, I was a kind of an introvert, and I felt weird. I always had issues and anxiety, like going to school. And I really attached to people who were nice to me and, you know, treated me like uh, friends. And it was just... A weird thing, and I felt the uncomfortability. I told my mother, and then she said, "We'll just invite him here." And we did that once or twice. And although I knew him through, you know, first grade to you know a certain grade, it was never the same. And I remember still always seeing him, giving him a hug, and you know, talking to him as much as I can. Um, I don't know what it was like for him. You know, I'm a white boy from Brooklyn, New York, uh, Italian and Irish mostly. Um, you know, for whatever fucking German in there and whatever the fuck. And it was, you know, I went to PS 153 in Brooklyn. There was a lot of um, black students and I didn't, like again, it was so hard for me to understand any concepts like that back then. But I knew the feeling, I knew the discomfort I felt. And I can't imagine what it was like for him. And that feeling, that moment in time is etched in me forever. I see no, you know, uh, I don't know, logic or whatever that really is going to, you know, convince me of <clears throat> that there isn't, there wasn't a problem and there still is a problem. You might not get it so blatant and, you know, although they do get blatant these days too. All right, so that's my little rambling, a little story about me growing up. And like I said, I'm a, you know, maybe I get mistaken for being Hispanic a couple of times. But if I'm seven years old, whatever age you are in first or second grade, and I'm noticing I'm getting discomfort, I don't feel right, and I don't like what the feelings I'm getting. And I go to my mother, and she tells, and then growing up, what is it like for? The other person, the African American, the black friend, the student. I just find it all.
fascinating. You know, where um, humans with these brains and we walk around with biases and cognitive disorders and we all fool ourselves and manipulate. It's just um, crazy how it's not that long ago. It's just not that long ago. And us as a society, as a civilization, have come to grips with it. You have to. And now with this whole race theory and <clears throat> things they teach in school, I thought it'd be a good idea, and I didn't do one of these last year, I don't believe. All right, so the first one I'm going to read is going to be from, which one should I do first? All right, let's do Education Week, the important political history of Black History Month. Uncovering the robust intellectual tradition among African-American school teachers by Jarvis R. Givens. All right. Many accept Black History Month as a special time of year, yet few recognize the role African-American teachers played in establishing and popularizing this tradition during Jim Crow. Originally founded in 1926, as Negro History Week by the famed educator and groundbreaking historian Carter G. Woodson, Black History Month is the product of black teachers' longstanding intellectual and political struggles. As a longtime public school teacher, Woodson witnessed white school leaders resist efforts to meaningfully transform curriculum and school policies. And while Earning his doctorate from Harvard University between 1908 and 1912, he learned how distortions about black life were constructed at the highest levels of education. Recognizing these barriers, he decided to work from the outside the classroom to partner with teachers. This began with Woodson founding the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in 1915. Woodson was particularly interested in using Negro History Week to infuse students' learning with critical knowledge about racial domination, as well as long traditions of black resistance and achievement. Negro History Week quickly became a cultural norm in black segregated schools. According to surveys conducted by black educator and journalist Thomas L. Dabney in 1934, it was celebrated in more than 80% of those schools by the mid-30s, 1930s. Black history is more about, or is more than a, oppression, that is a think, opinion. The creation of Negro History Week did not occur in a vacuum. It reflected a continuum of consciousness among black educators, channeling an intellectual and political tradition long practiced in the private spaces of their classrooms. This class of teachers placed the needs of their students above protocols imposed by white school leaders. This tradition stretched back as early as 1864, when black abol ab abolitionist Charlotte Fortin taught recently freed children in South Carolina about Toussaint L. Overture and the Haitian Revolution. Noticing the absence of such narratives in textbooks and materials supplied by white missionaries. Fulton wrote that black children, quote, should know what one of their own color had done for his race. A decade before establishing Negro History Week, Woodson and his colleagues at the M Street School in Washington planned professional development events for black teachers, and they did so independent of the school district. These workshops during the 1915 to 1916 academic year extended from previous strategies they employed to work around the official school curriculum. Woodson facilitated a history and civics workshop, which took place just after he published the inaugural issue of the Journal of Negro History, the first academic publication of its kind and one that Woodson founded and edited using the small salary he earned from teaching history, English and French at the M Street School. 
W.E.B. Du Bois, who had visited the school in previous years at the invitation of Anna Julia Cooper, the school's principal at the time, and the author of A Voice from the South by a Black Woman from the South, led workshops on black history for teachers. Is a quote, these educators insisted on the importance of providing students with cultural armor to repudiate, 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 rep- <laughs> The racial myths reflected in the nation's laws, social policies, and American curriculum. Such examples reflect a robust intellectual culture among black school teachers. What's more, these educators insisted on the importance of providing students with cultural armor. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Repudiate the racial myths reflected in the nation's laws, social policies, and American curriculum. But teaching about black life and culture was not just about songs, poems, and a few good stories of successful black people. Woodson emphasized the direct relationship between curricular content and the violent lived experiences of black people in the world. When reflecting on Negro History Week in 1926, he wrote the following in the Journal of Negro History. A Negro is passed on the street and is shoved off in the mine. He complains or strikes back and is lynched as a des- desperado who attacked a gentleman. And what if he is handicapped, segregated, or lynched? According to our education and practice, if you kill one of the group, the world goes on just as well or better. For the Negro is nothing, has never been anything, and never will be anything but a menace to civilization. And again, I'm interjecting here. This is not that far removed. I mean, this country needs to wake wake up, white people. It needs to really, you know, introspective. You, you have to analyze in this whole shit that's going on these days. Maybe I'll get to that at the end, but that's insane. It's just, ugh. I'll continue. Woodson argued that the official school curriculum cultivated anti-blackness as a social competence, and its system of representation reflected and reproduced social hierarchies that plagued human society. Based on the American curriculum, blackness and black people represented the antithesis of human civilization and achievement. Thus, Negro History Week emerged from black teachers' political clarity about the ideological foundations of American schooling and the desire to disrupt such foundations. Oh, man. Um, Just reading this shit gets me pissed. (laughs) Like, I can't believe, like, this is what the fucking... Alright. There's a connected article um... How to Get Black History Right, a series. And this goes into, um... Uh... You know, just the so importance and... Um, how important it is to recognize these things and analyze them and look within ourselves. But I'm going to get to the next article, which is, um... From the history... History.com and this one is just titled Black History Month. Ah, uh, come on, let me get credit. Uh, hmm. And I'm trying to find credit. I like to give credits for these articles since I'm just reading them word for word. But this shouldn't take too long. Um, ah, damn it. Maybe if I get to the bottom, I, I try to scan real quick. But this is um, from the History Channel website. Like I said, I'll put links in the description. And I'll start. Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history. Also known as African American History Month, the event grew out of Negro History Week, the brainchild of noted historian Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans. Since 1976, every U.S. president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month. Other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, 
also devote a month to celebrating Black History. Origins of Black History Month The story of Black History Month begins in 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment, abolished slavery in the United States. That September, the Harvard-trained historian Carter G. Woodson and the prominent minister Jesse E. Morland founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, ASNLH, an organization dedicated to researching and promoting achievements by black Americans and other peoples of African descent. Known today as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ASALH, <laughs> the group sponsored the National Negro History Week in 1926, choosing the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The event inspired schools and communities nationwide to organize local celebrations, establish history clubs, and host performances and lectures. Did you know the NAACP was founded on February 12, 1909, the centennial anniversary of the birth of Abraham Lincoln? Hmm. I like how they put it there from red. If you see these things, when you look at the articles, there's lots of links. It's actually videos for, and maybe even someone reading the article better than me. I'll continue. In the decades that followed, mayors of cities across the, count, the country began issuing yearly proclamations recognizing Negro History Week. By the late 60s, thanks in part to the Civil Rights Movement and a growing awareness of black identity, Negro History Week had evolved into Black History Month on many college campuses. President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month in 1976, calling upon the public to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Oh, that was a quote, end quote. Today, Black History Month is a time to honor the contributions and legacy of African Americans across U.S. history and society. From activists and civil rights pioneers such as Harriet Tubman, Soldier Truth, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and Rosa Parks, to leaders in industry, politics, science, culture, and more. Black History Month 2022 theme. Since 1976, every American president has designated February as Black History Month and endorsed a specific theme. The Black History Month 2022... <laughs> 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 right, this is a bleeper reel, right? <clears throat> All right? I'm talking to my engineers, which I don't have. The Black History Month 2022 theme... Black Health and Wellness explores the legacy of not only black scholars and medical practitioners in Western medicine, but also other ways of knowing, e.g. birth workers, doulas, midwives, naturopaths, herbalists, etc., throughout the African diasp diaspora. <laughs> D-I-A-S-P-O-R-A diaspora. The 2022 theme considers activities, rituals, and initiatives that black communities have done to be well. And there's another tie-in. Well, basically, I just keep seeing a lot of things with the critical race theory thing and going on in schools. And I came across... Um, uh, a weird thing with uh, someone who I kind of love and respect. And, and look, I don't have children, but they were talking about putting their kid in um, religion school, like a Catholic school. And I rolled my eyes and I laughed because I'm a big atheist and those are just criminal, fucking deviant. I don't, know, don't get me started. And when I was talking to her, <clears throat> He started going on about this critical race theory and um, like what was it doing, what they're teaching. And I'll, I'll kind of end this podcast in this way because it's just the way I live my life. I want the truth. And I tried to explain that to her that the truth is more important. Now, if you're telling me 
critical race theory is telling lies and they're doing the manipulation and slants on things, fine. I get it. Put a stop to it. It's bullshit. Do all the things you got to do. Whatever. But if it's the truth, then we have a problem and it needs to be addressed. That's how I feel. Oh, and things I don't want my kids, my kid doesn't know about um, color. And this is what made me do the podcast and what resonated with me so strongly. Because as soon as she said that, I remembered the story I told in the beginning of this podcast. Me being seven years old, having no clue, and finding out from actions, from environment, from people, not knowing what was going on, why they felt icky or didn't feel good, why they said certain things. So which way is better? I want to know the truth. I want to know exactly why they didn't pay black um, uh, military people and didn't give them benefits. And you're going to cut that out of uh, history. Now, yes, are you saying don't put it in because it just causes trouble? Like, I, I get it. But it's been going on now for a while with this, you know, woke, anti-race. You know, like, I get it. But when I hear this, you know, critical race theory stuff, I mean, too bad. If the truth hurts and it's going to be out there, too fucking bad. What? When did black people get to be able to vote? When did women be able to get to vote? How far is that removed from us? And we spent 400 years enslaving people? Just stop. What we did to the indigenous people here in the United States? I mean, just fucking stop. When we're fucking monkeys, you know, smart monkeys running around this planet. We evolved to be societies and small ones in general, but look at us now, right? Eight billion people on the fucking planet, pandemics. This is this is life. This is what you have to do. And I don't want no sugar coating. I want to know the fucking truth. I will sit my kid down. I, you know, I said this from the beginning. I would sit my kid down and tell him all about drugs. You know, I'm addiction master on social media and things like that. How about knowledge? How about Teaching the kids about these drugs and telling them, you know what? Like in my head, I'd be like, you know, I'd smoke a drunk with my kid when he was 18 or 21, you know, that type of mentality. But yeah, I don't want my kid, if, you know, 11 years old. You know, so there is a balance to this, but I want information, I want knowledge, I want the truth. And that's what needs to be said here. We are still assholes. Yes, me, every white person who says they're a black friend and they're not racist. Bullshit. You know, part of my, I never did the thing because I didn't want to start outing people, but I had a podcast, like a pre-war thing, and I was going to go and talk about my war on Facebook, and I kind of put it to the side, and um, what you find out is the people you love and respect, and you have no choice to love them, are racist, homophobic, you know, just oblivious to the fact of the engine they feed, the Racism they promote when they don't think they're promoting, you know, and then forget about that with fat shaming and ugly shaming and, you know, the whole fucking gambit. It's internet days, you know, you know, wake up America, wake up white people. What was that from? (laughs) Anyway, so in celebration of Black History Month, let us become more introspective. Let us seek the truth. I don't care how bad it is. And let's promote it and let's get it out there. Let's learn from our history, learn from our mistakes, learn from our past. Yes, I do agree about, hey, look, it wasn't my blah, blah, blah. I didn't enslave, I I didn't do this. No, but our ancestors did. Okay? And I grew up with the greatest family members in the world. You know, like... Greatest um, grandmother and grandfather on my father's side, on my mother's side. Although I didn't know my grandmother on my mother's side, she died when even they were young. But you've seen it growing up. I've seen it in the family. Doesn't mean I don't love them, but I, now I roll my eyes and like how fucking stupid people were. And like I said, in that 2017 war, you know, these are the same fucking family members who are bringing their daughters, nieces, and nephews to their fucking Christmas parties, and they're all in pictures together, 
and they're fucking on things promoting people who want to kill gay people and you know these fucking loud mouth religious fucking morons it just goes deep it's a psychological neurological it's the foundations of our you know heuristics our biases our mannerisms everything we do we go through life we cannot ignore these things you can't brush it aside i want the truth and i want all of it as much as i can truth over feelings in my opinion i hope everybody you know enjoyed this in some sense uh it's me rambling a lot but i thought it was important um and tying in the story from being younger to uh, a conversation i had a week ago when i couldn't believe that their, the woman's concern and what for her children was i don't want them to get involved in this they don't know nothing about color and it, it immediately went off like a bomb in my head, and I relived that moment, being seven years old with a black friend, feeling uncomfortable numerous times and not knowing what was going on, hearing certain words, and then all of a sudden I go to my mom, and things change forever. But I want to know. I want to know the truth. And I tried to explain to her, truth is more important. I mean, if you, like I said, I described this. I'll just keep going on with this damn thing. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Let's get a handle on this pandemic shit and people getting back to normal. We'll see. But I love you all. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Hugs and kisses. I love you all. Be well.